Hey guys, Ashley French here, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to do your own geometric wall. The boards I am using for this project are 1 inch by 2 inch pine boards in an 8 foot length. They sell them as natural pine or primed pine. Either one will work, just make sure each board is straight. You could also use PVC boards which are a bit more expensive. The tools I am using are my 18 gauge brad nailer, miter saw, measuring tape, carpenter square, level, and pencil. I recommend painting your boards before installing them. I laid the boards out and used a roller to paint all four sides. Then I prepped the wall by also painting it white and gave them both time to dry before getting started. The next step is to frame out all four sides of your wall. You can use the one by twos to create a border on the left and right side as well as at the top along the ceiling. I decided to keep my existing baseboard, but you may want to replace yours with one that is the same width as your one by twos. Next, find the studs in the wall and mark them with pencil or painter's tape. When installing each board of this geometric wall, try to hit a stud with at least one nail for each board. So for the very first board, there actually is no measuring. So what you're going to want to do on your very first board is you're going to want to cut a 45 degree mitered angle using your miter saw. You will need to turn your miter saw to a 45 degree angle. Simply unlock your miter saw, lift up on the lever, and turn it until it locks in at the 45 degree detent. Then lock it back down. Cut both ends at 45 degrees opposite to each other. Since we have mitered both ends, we are simply going to push this board until it is sitting flush against both the right side board and the baseboard, and then nail it into place. Since all of your angles in this project will either be 45 degrees or 90 degrees, a carpenter's triangle is the perfect tool to use to ensure your boards are perfectly aligned at every intersection. This board, for example, with the 45 degree mitered cuts, should have a perfect 45 degree angle where it meets the side and bottom boards. For the second board, I cut one end to 45 degrees and pushed it flush with the top board. Then I held the board where I wanted it to go and marked where it met the first board. I am moving my miter saw back to zero degrees for the second board since it meets the first board at a perpendicular angle, which means it gets a straight cut. Then I brought the board back over and pushed it into place where the mitered 45 degree side was flush with the top board and my straight cut side was flush with the first board. I used the carpenter square to ensure the straight cut side had a perfect 90 degrees between the boards. Then I did the same method with my third board. From here, I continue to add boards using the same method. As long as one end of your board is touching a perimeter board, you will have a 45 degree cut on one end and a straight 90 degree cut on the other end. When you are adding an interior board that doesn't touch a perimeter board, you will have a straight 90 degree cut on both ends. You will need to measure the distance before making your cuts. Make sure you use your carpenter square to ensure there is a perfect 90 degrees between your boards. I did use my measuring tape to make sure the boards were equally spaced all the way down. From here, I continued to add boards around the wall until I achieved the look I was going for. You can add as many or as few boards as you like. To finish the wall, I used dab, spackle, and filled all the nail holes. I simply rub it in using my finger. I like this product because it goes on pink and turns white when it is dry. Once it is dry, I sanded those spots down using a 220 grit sanding block. Next, I used Alex Flex crown molding caulk on all the seams where the boards touch the walls. I apply it with my caulk gun then use my finger to rub it in, and then wipe my finger clean. Take note that the spackle is to be used for nail holes and where wood boards meet wood boards, and caulk is to be used where wood boards meet the walls. 
The final step is to paint over the areas where you applied the spackle and the caulk and any other places you see that need paint touch up. Here I am giving you a look at my final wall in the event you want to replicate this particular layout. All right, so your geometric wall is done. Something that I really love about this particular accent wall is that there is not an exact perfect layout that you have to follow. You really can get creative with the placement of your boards and just go with the design that you really like. I'm gonna show you a photo of another geometric wall that I did in our old house. This one was in my son's playroom, and as you can see, I did a totally different layout for this one. So just play around with it, have fun with it, and I hope that you will check out some of my other accent wall videos.